When it comes to using the Midgeny Editor, there's something I noticed. A lot of people out there are having a lot of trouble either grasping how it works, what's going on, or even why they can't seem to get the edits that they're after. So today I'm gonna to share with you a bunch of tips that you can follow to help improve your chances of getting what it is you want out of Midjourney's AI image editor. But first of all, you wanna know the difference between the light editor and the full external image editor. The full external image editor has a lot more features and a lot more you can use in order to not only create better edits and have a bit more control over what you're doing, but also it's faster and doesn't take you in and out of the interface every time you make an edit. Now to show you what I mean, I have this image open, which I created with Midjourney. If I come down here, to edit, it will take me into what's called the light editor. And you'll notice there's no layers here. There's no retexture option, just some basic settings. But on top of that, if I decide to remove an area, add a prompt, you'll notice that when I submit, nothing really happens here and everything heads over to the create tab. So now I have to go over to the create tab and leave the editor while it tries to make my edit. And you'll also notice that it hasn't actually added Godzilla into the image, but I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later. But coming back to my original image, I can either go into the editor here and upload an image, and that will take me into the full external image editor, or I can come down here to edit once more. And where it says editor actions, I can say open in edit tab. And when I do that, I get my layers here, so I can add in multiple layers. I can use retexture. And on top of that, if I make a change with this prompt and click Submit, it adds it to a queue on the right here and I don't have to leave the editor to see what results I get. And I happily, and I actually managed to get Godzilla this time around in this image. And I can continue to adjust because I don't have to go back and forth from Edit to Create. And I also have all these other tools available to me also. Keep in mind that most of the tips in this tutorial are going to be in this full editor and not in the light editor. One thing I recommend is making one change at a time when using this editor. And the reason for that is because if you try to do too much all at once, sometimes it makes a little bit of a mess, puts things where they shouldn't be. But if you can actually just zero in on what you want to change one thing at a time and step it out, break it up, you have a little bit more control each time and you can get a little bit more refined in your process. This also offers a deeper level of customization as you can spend a lot of time on each little change in order to perfect the details of the image you're editing. Next thing you wanna do is understand a few different prompt setups to get the best results. The first thing I would try is to simply erase the area you wanna change, prompt for what it is you wanna see in that area and if it works, then you're off, you're good to go. But sometimes it doesn't quite work like that. Sometimes what you need to do is actually describe the entire image. And I think this is actually the more effective way of doing things if you're having trouble, because Midjourney tends to look at the entirety of the image and describing what you want to see in that image with a lot of detail can be the best way to put something in there that you wanna see. Now for the best results, you do wanna be a little bit generous with the selection space. Sometimes people will select things a little too tightly and that doesn't give Midjourney the space to sort of create what it needs. Because if you keep that space nice and tight, it's not gonna fill it entirely with what you're asking for. It's gonna try and put a bit of the scene in there also, which means sometimes you get nothing or sometimes you get something much smaller than what you're expecting. So making sure you're generous with that selection space is a really good tip for improving your chances of getting what it is you're after. But to piggyback on that, my next tip is to consider things like reflections, shadows, and environmental factors, because often the mid-journey editor is just a little bit too intelligent for its own good, and if it can't see any way that an object you're adding or changing in a scene works with the shadow in the area or the reflections on certain surfaces, it simply won't put it in there. So I would consider when you make your selection, Look at the lighting and see if you can figure out where a shadow would be and create a selection area for mid-journey to create that shadow. And if there are shiny reflective surfaces, consider that also. And so coming back to this image here, I've kept the prompt the same here. We can see we have the selection. And of course, before, when we rendered, we got absolutely nothing added into that space. Now to take a look at how the environment affects this scene, as well as the objects itself, we can see there is a window on the left where most of the light would be coming from. And of course, if you're not sure where the light's coming from, you can look at objects in the scene, like this chair is lit on the left with a shadow on the right, and the stairs are also casting a shadow off to the right also. So if I wanted a man to appear in this space, I need to consider also this reflection. He would be reflected below. So I need to then make sure I select below to account for the reflection, but also his shadow. If he's casting a shadow in this direction, I need to just kind of paint in there. Keeping in mind, I want to leave mid-journey a bit of information about this rug so it knows what to paint in. But on top of that, I'm also going to just use my mouse wheel to shrink my uh, brush size. 
he may actually put a shadow on the chair. So by coming in and adding or just removing a little bit of the side of the chair, I can cover some of this area up to get a little bit generous with that space again. Make sure the reflection's all right. And now I have space for a man, his reflection and his shadow, as well as a shadow he would cast onto the objects next to him. So keeping the prompt exactly the same, I hit submit. And look at the difference. We've got a man straight away in this first render and we move across. Every single image has someone in it. So it just goes to show you, this is one of the biggest uh, issues I think people have is when trying to add something into a scene, they don't consider the shadows, the reflections and the environment to make space for mid journey to actually render it in there in a convincing way. So this means that sometimes you have to take a fair bit of time and make a lot of edits into that area just to add one little thing into a small portion of the image. But my next tip is just to remember that you can also rotate images and objects pretty easily within the editor. Rotating layers is uh, one of those features that doesn't really stand out, but it's actually quite easy to do. I have layer one selected here, which is this uh, Godzilla image. I click move and resize. I can resize this layer, put it where I want. But if I hover on the outside of the corner, I get this little rotation sort of uh, mouse cursor, which means I can rotate this into position and then resize it more, even pop it up there. And then from there, if I decide I want to blend it in, I go to layer two, get my brush size and just erase around the outside to blend it in. Now, if you're not getting the results you're after, another thing you can do is head up to the prompt bar, try switching between different models. Sometimes one model will work better than others, not only at generating in the space, but generating the type of image that you're after. So if I have something a little less reality based this time, such as this image here. Maybe I decide I want to change uh, some elements of the skull. So I'm going to go through, erase the eyes and the nose, and even some of this stuff up here. Add a prompt, a cyborg skull with glowing eyes. And if I just submit that with version seven, we do get some different and unique options to check out. But what if I decide to come down to my settings and change this from version seven down to Niji six, which is more of an anime style. I submit that. And that's how what we get is a little bit meaner as a different style because it draws on a model that is trained on a different art style than just the global mid journey version seven. But I can also switch to anything from version five and above for the editor. So even if I try version five to see what I get with that, it again translates that a bit differently. We get more of an organic looking skull. So that is something you can definitely play with to get some different effects or to have things interpreted differently within the editor. Now to piggyback off that a little bit, what I recommend is also using things like personalization and style references in order to get a different result within a certain area of the image. So this means if you turn on personalization for one, you're gonna probably get an image or an edit that is more personalized to your taste. But this is where mood boards can also come in handy if you want an object or something of a certain style to appear within that space. This works the same if you're adding a style reference image or even an SREF code. You can generate various different elements or areas in different styles and get some pretty interesting images. So I have this samurai here, which has the background removed and I've just got a very sort of basic prompt. But if I come here to images, maybe I drag this Godzilla image in as a style reference and submit, and we're able to actually control the style of what has been filled in. But if we remove this style reference, go back in, but this time we add this weird banana image in there and submit. The style changes yet again, we get a bit more yellow and it tends to rely a bit more on the style of that image. But one more time, this time I try this Hieronymus Bosch image as a style reference, removing the banana and the background starts to resemble some Hieronymus Bosch style artwork, which is a little bit different again. So that's a really handy way to tailor your results within the editor, as well as just when you're prompting. But one of the more powerful methods, I'm gonna to switch to a different image. I have this image here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove the eyes from this face. I'm gonna type in a woman's eyes, and then I'm gonna type in SREF and punch in a random code. I don't know what the effect is here, but if I use a random SREF code for my edits and hit submit, it will apply that style to the edit. and We get something a little bit different than if we hadn't used that code. But if I head over to the Style Explorer, find something really unique like this code here, switch that code out, submit that. We get some very cartoony looking eyes instead. So that just shows you how well the SREF codes work in these images. But on top of that, 
Maybe I choose something like this code here. This time I just wipe out pretty much the whole bottom of the image. Paste that in, submit, and see how definitive of an effect it has on the image. This means this is a really great way that if you have your favorite style codes, but you don't wanna apply them to the entire image, you can apply them to sections of your image. But sometimes images just don't seem to work in the first place. So I have a few workarounds to help with it. So sometimes when you go into the editor and you upload your image and try to make an edit, you get this error message. And then you can't make any edits. One thing I recommend is I've often noticed that my VPN is turned on, so I'll pause that while I'm making the edits, or I'll even try switching browsers if I need to. But I have a better workaround that might help. Simply head down to the bottom left where your little avatar is, click on that, and then go to Manage Uploads. And often your image is sitting there in your uploads. If you click on it, head over to the right, you can right click and copy the image address. Then simply head back to the editor and this time edit from URL, paste that URL in, click OK, and often it will work from there. It won't work every time, but most of the time it gets me out of trouble when I'm trying to create something in the editor. Now my next tip is more of a process than a tip and that is to combine images in the editor because sometimes prompting for what you wanna see doesn't work, it doesn't add it in, it doesn't look right. So if you can actually create two different images and combine them, that's often the best way to do it. But keeping things consistent can be a bit of a challenge, but I have a process that can help you make that a bit easier. So let's say I wanted to add something like say Darth Maul into this photo to create something a little bit fun, a little bit of Star Wars mixed in with some samurai. I come up the top here and type in Darth Maul and a samurai and I submit. I seem to be having a bit of trouble kind of getting him into the scene. Now I don't want to erase too much because I really want to keep a lot of this scene in there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tab back to this original image, which is this image here. I'm going to type in my prompt because I want to make sure I have his full body to add into the scene. But I'm going to click on this image and drag it up as a style reference. And what I can do is then create a full shot of Darth Maul completely separately to this one by submitting. Now, because I used the original image that we had in our editor as a style reference, these images have all turned out pretty similar to the style we want. I want something like this one here. So if I want to use this image, I'll go ahead and download. I then head back to the editor and drag that image in. And now it's in the editor for me to use. I'm going to use Smart Select. And piece by piece, I select Darth Maul and his staff. I'm going to erase the background. And you notice that the lighting matches the scene. So I put Darth Maul in here. Now some of his stick has disappeared a little bit. So I'm going to restore some of that. And now I've added him in the scene and the style matches. So now I need to come down to layer two to remove the space around Darth Maul's stick, his feet, and even to add in where his shadow would go, as I mentioned earlier with the shadows and reflections. But on top of that, I've been a little too generous. So I'm gonna to go to restore and add some of this back in. I have my prompt, Darth Maul and Samurai. And because I've actually popped him in there, he will definitely be in the scene. And I'm just simply trying to blend him in by creating room for a shadow and space around him. I submit and because I created him using a style reference, he matches and I'm able to put those two into the scene and they blend together quite well. So that is a very powerful way to combine elements is by generating the images separately with the same style reference to get the exact same style and then combine them using layers in the editor. Now at this point in time, Omni reference doesn't work within the editor, but if you do need character consistency in your edits, I recommend switching to version six and then using the character consistency image prompt in order to get the character you're after. Now I have a full video workshop that can help you with your character consistency in mid journey. So I'll put a link to that in the description below and at the end of this video. But if I wanted to include this character in an image I'm editing, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm going to download this image and then we're gonna go find the image I want to add her into. Maybe I decide I wanna add her into this scene here. I'm gonna go into edit open an edit tab. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually widen this out. So I've got some space to put her. So I wanna put her off to the left over here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space where that rock is and simply type in a female warrior stands with a calm expression to the left of a waterfall. Now, before I add in my character reference, if I click add images, you'll notice that there is no option, but I need to come to my drop down here, change from version seven to 6.1 or six. We'll go with 6.1 and this time, we now have a character reference section. So I drag my warrior 
image in that I downloaded, she'll appear here and also for future reference down here. But I now submit that edit and we get a few different versions here of our character. But finally, what I recommend doing if you simply can't get what you're after is sometimes you're just gonna have to move on. Sometimes you're gonna have to try a different tool to get the edit you're after. Now that might sound like a bit of a cop out, but that's the reality of the situation. The editor isn't perfect, but there are some pretty awesome tools out there you can try for free. Like Nano Banana is a really useful tool for using edits in chat and getting a simple result, but you can also bring that back into the image editor and sort of black out what areas you want and make edits from there. So you can use things like Nano Banana or even generative fill in Photoshop in order to get a better, more controlled result when you're making your edits. Now I've always harped on about combining AI image tools with Photoshop if you really want the ultimate combination because what you can't do with AI, if you have some basic Photoshop skills, you can really go the extra mile pretty easily. Now, I highly recommend that you check out Photoshop or even try something like Photop, which is an online tool that's a lot like Photoshop, but free and you can actually have a bit of a play and you can bring your images in and make very small minor edits, but this time with a lot more control instead of gambling with the AI. Now, I hope those tips were useful to you and they help you get somewhere with your edits. Like I said, the mid-journey editor can be a bit fickle. Sometimes it's a little too smart for its own good and it just simply doesn't want to work. But by using some of these methods, you can definitely get some better results and try to work around these issues to improve the images you're trying to create. But otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. And if you found it interesting or useful, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and thanks for watching.